In this module, we're going to look at some different cache implementations and get an understanding of what they offer us and what it costs to use them. To start with, we'll have a look at what we mean by local cache stores and how in-process caching differs from out-of-process caching. Next, we'll look at the idea of abstracting away the details of individual caches into a generic interface. In the core library, we have an iCache interface that allows us to treat different cache stores in the same way. Then we'll look at individual cache stores that can run locally on the machine where the application is hosted. For each of them, we'll have a look at how to set them up and configure them. We'll look at the administrative options and any extra functionality they give us, the costs and benefits of using them, and how different stores lend themselves to different attributes of cache items. In the module, we'll look at the .NET memory cache, NCache Express, App Fabric Caching, and we'll finish with a look at the Null Cache, what it is, and why we need it. The simplest cache we can use is an in-process local cache, where the cache store is effectively just an object which is accessed inside the application process. So if I have an application running on a machine, and that can be a custom .NET app, or a website or API running in a worker process under IIS, and here's a simplified view of the memory allocation. I have the stack, where value types and references are stored, and I have the heap, where objects of varying sizes are held, and one of those objects is the cache. The cache object is available throughout the process, but one process cannot access another process's memory, so if I have another .NET app running, I can't use the in-process cache in my first process, because I can't cross the domain boundary. Equally, if I start a second instance of the same process, say, another app pool running the same site, there's still different app domains, and the second instance can't access the in-process memory from the first instance. The in-process cache is strictly limited to the process that hosts it, and no other processes on the machine can access it. Compare that to an out-of-process cache, where the cache store runs as its own dedicated process, which may or may not be a .NET application. The cache store will have a dedicated port or set of ports open to allow other processes to communicate with it so they can get and set from the cache. So if I launch an instance of my site's app pool, it can access the outer process cache provided it has the right client library to communicate through the ports. Launch a second application, and again, provided it has the client library, it can use the same cache and even share cached items with the app pool if it uses the same cache keys and object model. Launch a second instance of the app pool, and it can reuse all the items which the first instance has loaded into the cache. If another process on another machine wants to use the cache on this first machine, it would need firewall rules set up and the cache to be configured to allow remote connections. Out of process caches can usually be configured to allow remote access, but in this module we'll be using them purely as local cache stores, so we won't open any firewall ports and our store will be limited to local access. For different types of cache store, the pattern is the same as we've already seen. You need to be able to get from the cache, you need to be able to check if something's there, and you need to be able to set objects in the cache. We'll explore object lifespan later in the course, but all the caches we'll use support the notion that an object can expire, and take care of removing it from the cache store when it has expired. In our generic AOP framework, we can allocate items to different caches in code with our cache attribute, or at runtime with configuration. In order to do that, the framework needs to be able to treat all caches in the same way, which is why we have the iCache interface. iCache encapsulates the details of our caching pattern, so to implement iCache for a specific store, I need to be able to get from the cache and set to the cache with different types of expiry. The iCache implementation acts as a wrapper around the native client for a specific cache store, so that I can abstract away the details of the individual cache implementation and treat all stores in the same way. So if we explode the cache type enum, we can see all the available cache stores that we'll use in the course, and which use very different technologies, but they can all provide the feature set we need to treat them as an iCache. The benefit of the iCache interface is that I can swap caches at runtime and be confident that my code will work in the same way. And the drawback of iCache is that the only functionality we can use in the framework is what's specified by the interface, so we lose any extended functionality the cache store may have. For instance, NCache Express lets you iterate through all the items in the cache, but most other stores don't. So it's not generic functionality and it's not built into the iCache interface. 
using NCash Express through the iCash wrapper, you'll lose the ability to navigate through the cache. Similarly, the cache store may have advanced functionality like read-through caching backed by a database, an event model triggered when items are added or removed from the cache, a socket pool for multiple connections to the cache, a client cache, or caches split into regions. But in order to use our generic approach with any type of store, we have to pare the functionality down to the common set of features which all stores provide, so we lose all the extra functionality a store may have. But by avoiding that extra functionality, we can be independent of our cache store. Whereas if you're using any of those advanced features, you may be locked in to one particular implementation. So let's have a look at the first local cache store, the .NET memory cache. It's an in-process cache which is part of the .NET framework. Memory cache is in the system.runtime.caching assembly and is similar to the ASP.NET cache which lives in system.web.caching. It's been extracted, so consumers can use it without referencing system.web.